Chapter 8, Section 7 in the 7th grade note-taking guide is entitled Classifying Quadrilaterals. So now we're talking about the four-sided shapes. Four-sided shapes are important to us because many of the three-dimensional shapes that are standard material that we're going to see rely on four-sided shapes of one type or another. If we don't have an understanding of what those four-sided shapes are, and then using the area to find the information about those four-sided shapes, we're going to be in trouble. So today we're just going to focus on the four-sided shapes to quadrilaterals. So we've got definition of a parallelogram, that is one of the four-sided shapes. That's a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides, parallel and congruent. So picture a rectangle, and then take and tip the left and the right side, and that's kind of what a parallelogram looks like. A rectangle, rectangle we're very familiar with. A rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. So now you got to see that there's a couple different parts to that definition there. It's a parallelogram, which indicates that it has all the properties of a parallelogram, and then it also has on top of that all the angles being right. The idea of a rhombus, that's a parallelogram with four congruent sides. So here you have all the sides happening to be the same, uh, and then all the properties of a parallelogram on top of that. Now, some of you are saying four sides the same. Why isn't that a square? Well, that is a square. That's a parallelogram that does have four congruent sides, and it also has four right angles. So if you put together the idea of a rectangle and a rhombus, that's how you draw it together to make a square. And then a trapezoid, trapezoid is kind of the odd duck because a trapezoid is not really a parallelogram. Um, it's, it's quadrilateral, absolutely, but it's not a parallelogram because parallelograms have the opposite sides parallel and congruent. And a trapezoid does not have that. A trapezoid only has one pair of parallel sides, only one. Um, it can have one set of sides that happen to be congruent. Then it's called an isosceles trapezoid, but it doesn't have to. The only factor that makes it a trapezoid is that it has one pair of parallel sides, which are usually called the bases. So again, from the top, a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides, parallel and congruent. A rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. A rhombus is a parallelogram with four congruent sides. A square is a parallelogram with four congruent sides and four right angles. And a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at example one here. Example number one is asking me to give all of the names that apply to the quadrilateral and then to give the name that best describes it. So the first thing we check is, does it have two sets of parallel sides? If it only has one, we follow down the trapezoid path, game over. But if it has two sets, it's in the parallelogram family. Well, as you can see looking at example A here, you have this set of sides here, the top and bottom that are parallel to each other. You have this set of sides on the left and right side here that are parallel to each other. So that means this is a parallelogram. Now, it can have a more specific name if it's a parallelogram. We contrast that with example B. In example B, I know that's a little small, but you see only the left and the right side are parallel to each other. Again, parallel would imply that those, if we drew those as lines, would have the same slope. And clearly those do have the same slope because those sides are never going to cross each other the way that's drawn. When it has just one set of parallel sides, it's a trapezoid and that's it. And that's why B is kind of boring because it's trapezoid and trapezoid. It has only one set of opposite sides parallel, so it's a trapezoid. But as I was saying, in A there where we have parallelogram, then we can go to a more specific name. Here, taking a look at this, it doesn't have right angles. So it can't be a rectangle, it can't be a square. So the only other thing it might be, if it's anything, is it could be a rhombus. A rhombus has all four sides congruent. And as you can see here looking at the illustration, each of the sides, the top, the bottom, the left, and the right, each happen to have one hash mark through them. As you've seen when we've covered these sections before here, when they have hash marks, that indicates congruence. 
One hash mark through all those indicates that those four sides are the same as each other. So not only is this a parallelogram, it also happens to be a rhombus because it has all four sides that happen to be the same as each other. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number two here. In number two, they're asking me to draw a figure, and if not, explain why it's not possible to be drawn. So the first one is asking you to draw a rectangle that is not a square. Now, of course, rectangles and squares are very similar. The thing that probably pops into your mind right away here are the right angles. They just want you to draw a rectangle that doesn't happen to be a square here. Well, the way you draw a rectangle that's not a square is you avoid having all four sides the same. Because if all four sides are the same, then it's automatically got to be a square. But as long as we avoid the four sides being the same, but we have the right angles, it does have to be a rectangle there. And that's exactly what we have here. All right? You have a rectangle there. As long as we avoid the four sides being the same, it isn't a square. Of course, you have to have the right angles. That's the most important. All right, B, a square that is not a rhombus. Now remember, in order to be a rhombus, you just have to be fitting the definition of parallelogram, and you have to have four congruent sides. Well, think about it. If it has four congruent sides, all right, that makes it a rhombus. What does a square have? A square has four congruent sides. A square just happens to have right angles on top of it. So you're not going to be able to avoid drawing a square that doesn't have four congruent sides. They always have four congruent sides. So this one is not possible for that very reason. All right, last one here. They're asking me to give all of the names that apply to the quadrilateral and then give the name that best describes it. And this is something you're likely to see here in the homework today. Um, as you can see, looking at the answer box, there's a whole lot of answers here. So let's start with the first answer. Parallelogram. Parallelogram, again, describes any shape that has opposite sides parallel. As you can see here, we have the top and the bottom parallel, the left and the right parallel. So that means it fits into the parallelogram family. So when it fits into the parallelogram family, then we have all those other possible answers. As you heard me explain earlier, it could be a trapezoid, where it only has one set of parallel opposite sides parallel. If it has that, game over. Answer ends at trapezoid. But here, this is a parallelogram. All right, so now that we have parallelogram, let's go hit all the other shapes here. All right, we have rectangle. Rectangle has opposite sides congruent and four right angles. Well, we do have that here. Take a look. These sides here, left and right, happen to be the same as each other. Top and the bottom happen to be the same as each other. And you have four right angles there. So that means this is a rectangle. Now some of you are saying, but wait a minute. All four sides happen to be exactly the same. You're right. They are exactly the same, which is also why it fits the definition of square. But that means it does not violate this definition here for rectangle. Rectangle has all the properties of a parallelogram. And the opposite sides happen to be congruent here. Yes, the left and the right are the same. The top and the bottom are the same. So even though this isn't what we traditionally picture as a rectangle, it absolutely positively fits the definition for a rectangle. As you can see, we've also got rhombus thrown in there. Rhombus, remember, just has four congruent sides. And indeed, this shape does have four congruent sides. It just happens to have the right angles on top of it. So it also fits the definition of rhombus. All right, so now that we've got that litany of options there, all right, then we're going to throw up the last possible answer here, which is the name that best describes it. And of course, the name that's the best descriptor up there is the square. That's the most specific name because it has the four right angles. It has the four sides that are congruent. That fits to the T the definition of a square. So the name that best describes it is a square. Taking a look at the concluding example there, number two, they're asking me to draw the figure. And if it's not possible to draw, explain why. And that's a rhombus that is not a square here. Well, if I'm asking you to draw a rhombus that is not a square, remember, rhombus has four congruent sides, just like a square does. 
but a rhombus does not have right angles. It's squared up. So all you have to do are avoid the right angles here, which is absolutely what I do. I avoid the right angles here. I have four sides that are the same. Notice they just put the tick marks through them to indicate they are the same there, and you end up with a rhombus that is not a square.